In this video, we'll shine a light on the best exercises to give someone with shoulder hypermobility and how to progress them. So let's dive in. Download the free PhysioTutors app now and become the best clinician you can be. Shoulder hypermobility spectrum disorder is a hereditary condition that lets the joint move beyond their normal ranges. It is a common finding as the prevalence rises up to more than 5%. Although joint hypermobility may be advantageous in throwing sports where high flexibility is required, patients with hypermobility spectrum disorder are at greater risk of developing shoulder symptoms at some point. Although joint hypermobility is not pathological, individuals with joint hypermobility syndrome frequently report symptoms of joint pain. It has been thought to be related in some way to a higher risk of developing osteoarthritis and the risk of suffering from upper body musculoskeletal symptoms in these people is reported to lie 1.5 to 3.5 times higher. Furthermore, it can have an important impact on people's everyday lives as those with shoulder hypermobility spectrum disorder are 1.6 to 4.4 times more likely to be suppressed from their usual activities. This is reported to be mostly because of experienced shoulder and neck symptoms. And if they develop symptoms, they are at high risk of having to bear with it for more than three months. Current guidelines propose stability exercises for joint protection, although evidence for these recommendations is limited and based on theoretical ideas rather than scientific proof. Mechanical loading is known to increase muscular strength and tendon stiffness, and in this aspect, interest grew in the possible benefits of heavy strengthening exercise. A pilot study showed the safety and feasibility of shoulder strengthening in people with hypermobility spectrum disorder and long-lasting shoulder symptoms, and this was further confirmed in an RCT. For this video, we summarize the results from the RCT by Benan Leagat et al., which was conducted in 2022 and compared low load versus high load strengthening exercises for shoulder hypermobility. Hypermobility spectrum disorder was defined using the Baton score, a cutoff of more than 5 out of 9 for females up to the ages of 50 years and more than 4 out of 9 for those above 50 years and all males was the main criteria to be included in the trial. In case the Byton score was one point below the age and sex specific cutoff and the five part questionnaire was positive with more than two out of five positive answers, patients were diagnosed with historical hypermobility spectrum disorder. For more info about the Byton score, we recommend you watch the video for which you can see the link in the top right corner. The five part questionnaire is a self assessment questionnaire that asks the following questions. The participants further had musculoskeletal pain in at least one shoulder for at least three months and or sustained recurrent joint dislocations or had recurrent joint instability without the reported history of trauma. Participants in the high load group received five exercises to perform two times a week under supervision and once a week at home. The exercises were performed using dumbbells up to 15 kilograms and loads were individually adjusted. The exercises performed were the following. Sideline external rotation in neutral, prone horizontal abduction, prone external rotation at 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, supine scapular protection and seated scaption. The exercise parameters were as follows. In the first three weeks, the exercises were performed at 50% of 10 RM and progressed to 70% and to 90% of 10 RM in weeks 2 and 3. From weeks 4 to 9, the loads were increased to 10 RM and in weeks 10 to 15, three sets were performed using loads of 8 RM. The control group also exercised, but they performed isometric exercises against the wall and using yellow resistance bands and low load dynamic exercises. The primary analysis revealed that the high load strengthening in hypermobile shoulders led to greater improvements in shoulder function measured with the WOSI questionnaires compared to the low load program. 
the mean difference was minus 174.5 points when adjusted for baseline WOSI score, age, sex and clustering around the physiotherapy clinic. This difference was under the minimal important difference, but when the per protocol analysis was done, the mean differences between both groups attained mean 250.7 points. Nearly two-thirds of patients in the high-load program attained a relevant outcome compared to approximately half of patients in the low-load group. A change of at least 252 points in WOSI was defined as a clinically relevant outcome. The adjusted number needed to treat was 3, with a narrow confidence interval ranging between 2 and 7 patients. The minimal important difference of the WOSI questionnaire is reported to range between 10.4% and 14%, thus between 218.4 and 294 points. Of course, the main intention to treat analysis then revealed that the mean between group improvement in WOSI was below this threshold with 198.7 points. When looking at the adherent participants, those completing at least 32 out of 48 sessions, the mean between group difference in WOSI was minus 250.7 points. Furthermore, in a study by Park et al. in 2018, the minimal clinically important difference in the WOSI scores after arthroscopic repair of anterior shoulder instability was reported to be 151.9 points. So is the high load strengthening program really superior to the low load one? At least not at the short term follow up of 16 weeks. However, we can derive some lessons from this study for clinical practice, where we work in not so strictly controlled environments like in RCTs. When your patient is adherent to the exercise sessions, you may expect greater improvements with the high load strengthening program. So take it a go and don't fear loading your patient with shoulder hypermobility. All right, this was it for this video. I hope you learned something today by watching and I refer you for a ton of more research related contents to our website physiotutors.com or our Physiotutors app. There we also covered this study in much more detail. Click here to read it online.